morning. Amen. So let's turn to the Lord in prayer and then we'll hand it off to Deacon Ray Lilliston. Amen. Father, thank you for this opportunity uh, to be together on this prayer line. Thank you for the fellowship we enjoy. Thank you for the word that comes across that strengthens us and renews us and pushes us a little bit further. Uh, we hold each other accountable by these practices, Lord, and we thank you for it. Bless Deacon Ray as he comes tonight uh, to share the word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good evening, right. my Zion family. Uh, if we can open up with a word of prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for yet this new day, new opportunity you're giving us a fresh start. Lord, I ask that you will just use me right now as I present this devotion, Lord, that it will touch the lives and help someone. And most of all, that you will be glorified. So I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So my scripture lesson tonight will be coming from Genesis chapter 4, verse 9. And if we could stand as we read the word of God, that is Genesis chapter 4, verse 9. Thus beginning the reading of God's holy and inerrant word. Then the Lord said to Cain, where's your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The word of God. For a title for my devotional, I'm going to term it as, Am I my brother's keeper? We are mandated to have a genuine love and care for our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. According to John 15, 12, this is my commandment, love each other in the same way that I have loved you. Romans 12, 10 states, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. If we see a family or friend dealing with a life circumstance, one who has fallen by the wayside, missing in action or heading down a road of self-destruction, we are responsible to and accountable to minister and help meet the need of that individual. Whenever we ask a loved one, is there anything that we can do for them? Don't just out of formality ask. Most of the time their uh, response will be no. And I am okay, but they could very well have an immediate need. Be prepared to meet the need better yet. If you discern a family member or a friend is in need, don't just ask them, go ahead and bless them, whether the need be in prayer, helping, or financial, uh, or financial. Develop the mindset of the Nike slogan, just do it. We should pray and ask God for a discerning spirit that the Holy Spirit will reveal to us Brother is in need. At the time we can enter, at that time we can intercede and pray and act accordingly. Hebrews 5:14. But solid food belongs to those who are full age. That is, those who by reason of use have senses exercised, exercised to discern both good and evil. Three points summarizing why we are our brother's keeper. The first point, accountability. We are accountable as believers to minister, pray, help, and speak life, not only to our biological and church family, but we are accountable for that homeless brother or sister we see on the streets to introduce them to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Or those young boys and girls who we see with no sense of guidance or direction, or anyone who we see may be lost or destitute. When we see that a brother or sister is missing in action, we need to call or visit them to determine if they are okay. Accountability scriptures. First Thessalonians 5:11. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. Ephesians 4.25. Therefore, 
having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Ephesians 4.32, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Galatians 6.1, brother, if anyone is caught in a transgression, you are spiritual, should restore him as a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch over yourself, lest you be tempted. Galatians 6.2, Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. James 1.19. Know this, my beloved, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to wrath. Point number two, responsibility. We are mandated by God to love one another. Scriptures, 1 Corinthians 3.8. Who who plants and who who waters are one and each will receive his wages according to his labor. Proverbs 22, six, train up a child in a way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart. Romans 12, six to eight, having gifts that differ according to grace given to us, let us use them in prophecy and proportion of our faith. If service in our serving, then the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, and the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, and the one who does act of mercy with cheerfulness. Point number three, iron sharpened iron. We need to always encourage one another, motivate one another, minister to one another, speak life, and constantly reinforce that God is able. Speak the truth in love. Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. We are like a bunch of bananas when we are collected, connected. When we have a strong bond, we can support one another. When we are separated, we are removed from that bond and there's no accountability for one another. Eventually someone may fall. We need, we need to constantly stay connected and hold each other accountable. Closing scripture, Romans 15, one, we that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, you are, amen. Thank you, everyone. Amen. Thank you, Brother Ray. What a great thought. Amen, Brother Ray. Amen, Amen sir. Thank, Thank you. For Amen. This prayer line. Amen. This is helping us to be our brother's keeper, our sister's keeper, by coming on this prayer line every night and being a part of this. Praise God for the ministry uh, tonight. Amen. Sure. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight and, and just ask God uh, to bless uh, the, the word of God that has come to us 